Yes, ma'am. Did you manage to get the ice out of those little tin trays? Yes, ma'am. And you filled the little tin trays up again with water? Yes, ma'am. I had a bit of a struggle with those things on me. Very good, Edward. You're making giant strides. Yes, ma'am. Madam I'm calling Mrs. Bradman and Mrs. Chastain, and I will have our coffee in here after dinner. And Dr. Bradman and Mr. Cornermine and Mr. Chastain will have theirs in the dining room. Is that quite clear? Yes, ma'am. And remember, Edward, when you're serving dinner, try to remember to do it calmly and methodically. As you are not in the Navy, it is unnecessary to do everything with the double. Very good, ma'am. Now go and fetch the ice. Yes, ma'am. Not in run, Edward. Yes, ma'am. No sign of the advancing rods? No, oh, not yet. No ice. It's coming. I've been trying to discourage Edith from being quite so fleet of foot. He mustn't mind if everything is a little slow motion tonight. I for one shall welcome it. These last two nights have been extremely agitating. What do you suppose to use ideas to go and leave us and get married? The reason was becoming increasingly obvious here. Yes, but nobody thinks anything of that sort of thing nowadays. She could have popped into the college hospital, had it, and popped right out. Her social life could have been seriously undermined. We must keep Edward in the house, Ma. Thank you, Edward. I left my silver case on my dressing room table. Would you fetch it for me? Yes, sir. Uh, steady, Edward. You took them by surprise. Dry martini, I think. Yes, darling. I suppose the demo party will want something a bit sweeter. We'll have this one for ourselves, anyhow. Oh, dear. What's the matter? I have a feeling that tonight's going to be absolutely awful. It will probably be funny, but it's not awful. You must promise not to catch my eye. If I giggle, and I'm very likely to, it will ruin everything. You mustn't. You must be absolutely serious and possibly a little intense. God hurt the old girl's feelings, no matter how funny she may be. The wider Brandon's and Chestnuts, darling. They're as skeptical as we are. They'll probably say the most dreadful things. I have warned them. There has to be more than three people, anyhow. There has to be the Brandon's and Chestnuts because it couldn't have been the vicar and his wife. Because A, they're dreary, and B, they probably would not have it anyhow. Thank you, Edward. Yes, sir. Steady! <laughs> Well, to make him wear a book on his head like it is the parchment lessons. <laughs> Here, try this. Lovely, dry as a bone. To the unseen. I must say, that's an incredible title. If this evening's a su success, I shall start on the first draft tomorrow. How extraordinary it is. What is? Oh, I don't know. Being right at the beginning of something, it gives one an odd feeling. Do you remember how I got through the air for all the night goes out? Suddenly seeing that haggard, rattled woman at the Hotel Beeritz, of course I remember. We stayed up half the night talking about it. She certainly was a strange old woman. I wonder who she was. And if she ever knew or knew, ever recognized that description of herself, oh, here's to her anyhow. Will you have another? Oh, darling, it's most awfully strong. Never mind. If you still borrow to be a help to you, when you were thinking something out, I mean. Well, she concentrated, yes, but she didn't concentrate very often. I do wish I'd known her. I wonder if you'd have liked her. Yes, I'm sure I should. As you talk about her, she sounds enchanting. Yes, I'm sure I should have liked her because, as you know, I've never felt the least bit jealous of her. That's a good sign. Poor Elvira. Does it still hurt when you think of her? No, not really. Honestly, I wish it did sometimes. I feel rather guilty. I wonder if I died before you'd grown tired of me that you'd forget me so soon. That's a horrible thing to say. No, I think it's quite interesting. Well, to begin with, I haven't forgotten Elvira. Remember how fascinating she was and how maddening. Remember how badly she played all games and how cross she got when she didn't win. I remember her gay charm when she achieved over her way and her extreme acidity when she did not. I remember her physical attractiveness, which was tremendous, and her spiritual integrity, which was nil. Oh, well, you can't remember something that was nil. I remember how morally untidy she was. <laughs> was she more physically attractive than I am? That beer is a very tiresome question and fully deserves the wrong answer. <laughs> you really are very sweet. Thank you. And a little naive, too. Why? Because you imagine that I mind about Elvira being more physically attractive than I am. I should think anyone would mind if it were true. Or perhaps some old-fashioned maybe a female psychology. Oh, well, not exactly old-fashioned, darling. Just a bit didactic. How do you mean? It's didactic to attribute positive effects of one type to the effects of another. For example, because you know Elvira would mind terribly if you found another woman more physically attractive than she was, it doesn't necessarily follow that I should. Elvira was a more physical person than I am. I'm certain of that. It's all just a question of degree. I love you, dear. 
I know you did. Not one person could describe it as the first fine canvas fashion. Mm, would you like it to be? <laughs> Good heavens, no. Wasn't it a shade of vehemence? Well, you never said a lesson, Charles. When neither of us led exactly pretty lives. Canvas fashion at this stage would be incongruous and embarrassing. I hope I haven't been in any way disappointed, dear. Oh, don't be so idiotic. Well, after all, your first husband was a great deal older than you, wasn't he? I shouldn't like to think you'd missed out all along the line. <laughs> there are times, Charles, where you go too far. I'm sorry? As far as your views of waspish female psychology goes, there's a rather strong vein between you. I've heard that said about Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar's neither here nor there. Perhaps he is. Maybe we'll ask Madame Arcati. Oh, you're awfully annoying when you're determined to be witty at all costs. It's exactly what Elvira used to say. I'm not at all entirely surprised. This is the child as she was. I never expected that she was entirely lacking in perception. <coughs> Darling Ruth. There you go again. I so believe I told you I love you, my love. Poor Elvira. Didn't that warm, calm, every kiss mollify you at all? You're very annoying. You know you are. When I said poor Elvira, it came from the heart. He must have bewildered her so terribly. I'm trying to bewilder you at all? Never for an instant. I know every trick. Well, all I can say is you better get a divorce immediately. Put my glass down. There's a darling. She certainly had a great talent for living. It was a pity she died so young. I wonder if I died before I grew tired of me that you'd get me married so soon. You won't die. You're not the dying sort. Neither was Elvira. <laughs> oh, yes, she was. She had a certain uh, ethereal, not quite of this world quality to her. No one would call you even remotely ethereal. <laughs> She was of the earth, earthy. Well, she is now, anyhow. <laughs> you know that's the kind of remark that shocks people. Honestly, it's surprising how people are shocked by honesty more than they are by deceit. Write that down, you might forget it. You underrate me. Anyhow, it was more of a question of uh, poor taste rather than honesty. I was devoted to Elvira. We were married for five years, then she died. That was seven years ago, Ruth, and with your help, I'd overcome the whole thing. Oh, admirable. But if tragedy should darken our lives, I shall say, with prophetic foreboding, poor Ruth! <laughs> That's probably the Brownies. Might be Madame Arcati. No, she won't come on the car. She'll come on a bicycle. She goes everywhere on a bicycle. Really, it's very spirited of the old girl. Shall we go, or shall we let Edward have his fling? Wait a minute and see what happens. <laughs> Perhaps he didn't hear. He's probably on one knee in a pre sprinting position, waiting for Cook to answer the door. Say yeah, Edward. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Doctor and Mrs. Brown. Come on, sweet, are we? I only get back in the hospital about half an hour ago. Of course not. Madame Arcati isn't even here yet. It must have been her we passed coming down the hill. Said I thought it was. Oh, then she won't be wrong. I'm so glad you're able to come. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Chaston. Welcome. Sorry, we're late. Ready for the festivities? We've been looking forward to it. I really feel quite excited. I don't know, pins and needles all week. I guarantee that violet will be good, I mean, I promise. There is no need. I'm absolutely thrilled. I've seen Madame Arcati two or three times in the village. She didn't do anything at all peculiar, if you know what I mean. A dry martini, I think. By all means. I should hope that's what's to be assumed. She certainly is a strange woman. It was only a chance remark of the victor of the known Miss Summer's Eve dressing some sort of Indian ropes that made me think she was a psychic at all. That's why I began to make inquiries. Apparently, she's been a professional in London for years. It is funny, isn't it? I mean, doing it as a professional. Well, I believe it's very lucrative. Do you believe in it, Miss Carlemine? Do you think there's anything really genuine about it at all? Oh, I'm afraid not. But I do find it interesting how easily people allow themselves to be deceived. But she must believe it herself, doesn't she? Or the whole business is big. I suspect the words of her as a professional, Charlie, but... That's what I'm hoping for, anyhow. The character I'm learning for my book must be a complete imposter. It's one of the most important factors of the whole story. <coughs> what exactly are you hoping to get from her? Uh, jargon, for instance. Oh, tricks on the tray? Uh, yes, exactly. I haven't been doing a seance in years. I wish to refresh my memory. Then it's not entirely new to you. Oh no. When I was young, I had an aunt that used to come and stay with us. Uh, and she imagined to do some meeting of some sort and went off into elaborate trances after dinner. Her mother was fascinated by it, really. Was she convinced? Oh, good heavens, no. She just naturally disliked my aunt and loved making a fool of her. <laughs> I gather you didn't have any tangible reports. 
Oh no, sometimes she didn't do so badly. On one occasion, when we were all sitting around in the pitch dark, my mother groping her way around the shamanade, my aunt suddenly gave a shrill scream and saw she said she saw, saw a small black dog in the corner by the piano. Someone flipped on the lights and sure enough, there it was. How extraordinary! It must have been a stray that had come in from the street. Uh, yes, but I must say I tipped off my house auntie for producing it, or rather for utilising it. Even what mother happened? was a bit shaken. What happened to it? It lived with us for years. Oh, it sure hope Madame our party won't produce any livestock. We have so very little room in this house. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love having my fortune told. I expect so. I hope so. One time I had my fortune told on the South Sea Pier. They said I was surrounded by lilies and a golden salmon. It worried me for days. <laughs> <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> have you ever attended to a doctor? Oh, well, professionally, I mean. Oh, yes. She had influenza in January. She's only been here just over a year, you know. I must say, she was seen to be singularly on psychic then. I always understood that she was an author. Oh, yes. We originally met as colleagues at one of Mrs. Wilmot's Sunday evenings in Sandgate. What sort of books does she write? That's not all nonsense, I assume. Two sorts. Rather whimsical children's stories about enchanted woods containing flora and fauna, and minor biographies containing uh, very sentimental, funny, and reverent themes. Here she is. She knows, doesn't she, about tonight? I should hope she doesn't. Oh yes, it was all arranged last week. I simply mentioned to her how profoundly interested I was in your coat, and she blossomed like a rose. Oh, I really feel quite nervous. Is so the we're going to make a speech? Uh, you go and meet her, darling. I've left my bike against that little bush out there. It'll be perfectly all right if anyone touches it. Of course, ma'am. Madame McCarty. My dear Madame McCarty. Sorry, I'm rather late, but I had a sudden presentiment that I was going to have a puncture, so I went back to fetch my pump, and then of course I didn't have a puncture at all. Perhaps you were on the way home. Dr. Bradman, the man with the gentle hands. I'm delighted to see you looking so um, this is my wife. We are old friends, we meet when we never shop. Mom, I will want you to Of course. And this is my husband, Timothy. Delighted, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, would you like a cocktail or a concoction of some sort? It's a dry martini, yes, if it's a concoction, no. Experience is talking to very, very concoctions. It is a dry martini. How delicious. It was a wonderful sight when you were this evening. I was definitely a bird song. Oh, it's been lovely all day. Ah, yes, but the evening's the time, mark my words. Dreadfully 
ignorant of me not to know, but who was Princess Polyotomy? She was originally a Jewess from Odessa of quite remarkable beauty. It was an accepted fact that people used to stand on their seats at railway stations to watch her be by. She was a keen traveler. In her younger days, yes. Then she went to Mr. Clark in the council service and settled down for a while. How did she become Princess Polyotomy? That was years later. Mr. Clark passed over and left her penniless with two strapping girls. Oh, how unpleasant! So, there was nothing for it but to take to the road again. So off she went, bag and baggage, to Gladstone. What an extraordinary place to go! <laughs> she had cousins there. Years later, she met old Palliotani, returning from the secret mission in Japan. He was immediately staggered by her beauty, and they married shortly afterwards. Then her life became really interesting. I should hardly have described it as though before. What happened to the girls? She neither saw them nor spoke to them for 23 years. How extraordinary! No, not at all. She was always very erratic emotionally. Thank you. Edward? Is there any? I don't think so. If 
not matter much once I'm off, but the interruption during the preliminary stages could be disastrous. Well, Madame Akati, the time is drawing now. Who knows, it may be receding. How very true. I hope you feel in the mood, Madame Akati. It isn't a question of mood, it's a question of concentration. Oh, don't worry, Madame Akati. If you're not quite ready, we can perfectly easily wait. Oh, nonsense, my dear. I am absolutely ready. Hi ho, hi ho, to work we go. Is there anything you'd like us to do? Do? Yes, like uh, hold hands or anything like that. So All that will come later. First, a few deep, deep breaths of fresh air. You may talk if you wish, it will not disturb you in the least. Oh dear! Uh, next time dinner, darling, I congratulate you. The moon's probably quite right. <laughs> that cuckoo is very angry. I'm not a cuckoo, I'm a man. <laughs> I said that cuckoo is very angry. Listen. How can you tell? Tanda, no moon, that's as well. I see a mist rising from the marshes. There's no need for me to light my bicycle that bit, so I mean there's no one likely to fall over it. Oh no, we're not expecting anybody else. Good night, you foolish bird. You have a table? Yes, we thought this one might go here. Dropping one with a drink sign would be better. Change over.
as you might hear, one can never tell, they're dreadfully unpredictable. They usually take the form of a cold room. I don't think I shall like that. Reaching almost hurricane velocity. Oh, well, would it be more helpful to take the breakable ordinance off the mantelpiece before we start? That won't be this necessary, Mrs. Condamine. I assure you of my own methods of dealing with elementaries. I'm so glad. Now, in your hands and your minds. Are you telling us we're trying to think of nothing? Absolutely nothing, Dr. Bradman. Trying to think of blank space or a nondescript color. That really is best. Now, I'll do my canvas. Very good. I will now start the grammar program.
never, never again. It's all I can say. Never again for the entirety of my life. What is the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing's the matter with me. I'm just looking at the whole business, that's all. Did you hear anything that we didn't hear really? <laughs> of course not, that was only pretending. Oh, you know you were. Oh dear, look at the demo party! What are we to do with her? Uh, bring her around, quickly, bring her around now. I think we're going to leave her alone. Uh, quickly, bring her around. It's dangerous to leave her like that. Yeah, she's up, all right. Get her, get her some brandy. Give me some brandy. Here, here, here. Wake up, Madame Akati. Drink this. Be careful, we still need to hold out her dress. Wake up, Madame Akati. This is Tommy Tucker. Wake up. She's coming now. <laughs> well, that's that. Oh, you are right. Certainly. You have felt better in my life. Oh, would you like some more brandy? So that's the funny taste in my mouth. Really, Dr. Brown, that's the allowing them to give me brandy. You ought to have known better. Brandy on top of a trance can be quite struck. Take it away. I shan't sit for what's matters it is. I know I shan't. Why on earth not? The whole experience unhinged me. Well, what happened? Is it satisfactory? It's nothing much happened after you went off the damn our party. Something happened, all right. I can feel it. No poltergeist at any rate. That's a good thing. Any apparitions? Not a thing. No ectoplasm? Oh, I'm not quite sure what that is, but I don't think so. No, curious. I feel as though something tremendous has taken place. Charles pretended to hear a voice in order to frighten us. <laughs> Which was only a joke. A very poor one, I may say so myself. Nevertheless, I'm prepared to swear that there is someone else certain to do a part of my I don't see how it really can be, Madame Alfredi. I certainly hope I can call you this something. However, we are bound to find out in a day or two. Then it's going to noise should occur, and see the apparitions might let me know at once. Of course, we'll telephone immediately. I really must be on my way now. Are you sure there isn't you wouldn't like anything before you go? No, I see all what you know on the soft pen at home that only be hot enough. What? Wouldn't you think you'd be wise here with Australia? I really think you should have done my part here, because that trance and everything can be really quite a sell. I must switch the fiddle. I was with capital after a trance, but you did it, Steve. Good night, Mr. Tonfly. Good night. Congratulations, Mr. Tonfly. I am fully aware of the irony in your voice, Dr. Bradman. As a matter of fact, you have been an admirable subject for telepathic hypnosis. A chum of mine. I shall have a look over. Yeah, I'm sure I should be charged. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night, everybody. I really must be on my way now. Next time you was really grab back to it. Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear! Do you mean for it, Mr. Hunterman? She's quite I'm sorry, I really can't help it. I've been holding it in for ages. <laughs> she <laughs> only put you in your place, George. Serves you right. She's bad, right? Original line than you usually do. She's probably half convinced by now. Hmm, possibly. A trance was genuine enough, although that's always easily accounted for. Hysteria? Yes, a form of hysteria, I suppose. I do hope Mr. Condomise went off the atmosphere he wanted for his book. Oh, I'm sure he would have gotten a great deal more if he had spoiled everything by showing off. I really am quite impressed with him. Well, you know, girls aren't coming down here at a hell of a speed. We're in trouble lighting my down. <laughs> Not dear about her, actually. I believe she is completely sincere. Oh, Charles, how can you? That wouldn't be possible, Doctor. Some sort of self-hypnotism or something? Mm, yes. Now, as a matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you for a little bit. I was talking to you I was talking to your wife about something. Oh, yes, I was talking to your wife a few moments ago about there are certain types of hysterical subjects. George, dear! See, the moment, the moment I begin to talk about some minute interest, no wife drops. Do you no wife drops. Half the women. I'm going to do my just for fun. Would you like a drink before you do? No, we really must be off. I mean, by right, it's quite right. I need to get up abominably early tomorrow morning. I have a vision in one day tomorrow morning. Have you really must be going to Well, that's right, we have that thing. <laughs> <laughs> sure about drinks. 
I am quite sure, thank you. Well, I'm sure I should remember you did. Come along, darling. Good night. Good night. Well, darling. Well? Did you say the evening has been profitable? Uh, yes, I suppose so. It was awfully funny at moments. Uh, yes, it certainly was. What's the matter? The, the matter? Yes, you seem old somehow. Do you feel quite well? Uh, perfectly. I think I'll have a drink. Would you like one? Oh, no, thank you, darling. It's uh, really chilly in here. Come on, we'll the fire. I don't think I'll make any notes tonight. I should start fresh in the morning. Oh, God! Charles! That was very clumsy, Charles, dear. But it's true, it is you, old mother. Of course it was. What's the matter, Charles? Are you a ghost? I suppose I must be. It's all very confusing. Charles, what do you think will be over there for? Look at me. What's happened? Uh, you must see her over there. See who? Elvira. Elvira? Um, yes, it is. Um, Ruth, dear, this is Elvira. Elvira, this is Ruth. Come sit down, dear. Um, but you must be able to see her, right? Listen, Charles, come sit down by the fire. I'll mix you another drink. Don't worry about the rest of the carpet. Elvira can clean it up in the morning. Uh, but you must be able to see her, right? You must be. Are you mad? What's happened to you? You can't see her? I'm going mad. Here, drink this. Oh, this is appalling. Well, sit down and relax. What do you want me? What do you want me to relax for? I'm never going to relax again for the rest of my life. Sit down. Why are you so anxious to me to sit down? What would that do? You can't relax standing up. African natives can. They can stand on one leg for hours. I don't happen to be an African native. <laughs> you don't happen to be a what? An African native. What's that got to do with it? Never mind, see. I sat down. We'll say no more about it. Like some more? <laughs> yes, please. Very unwise. You always had a weak head. I can drink you out of the table. There's no need to be aggressive, Charles. I'm doing my best to help you. I wasn't talking to you. Who are you talking to then? Elvira, of course. The hell with Elvira. There now, she's getting cross. I don't blame her. Who don't you blame her for? I was talking to Elvira, Ruth. Really. Oh, now listen here, Charles. I got you've got some sort of plan behind all this. I'm not quite a fool. I suspected you were going to doing that idiotic seance. What? Don't be so silly. What kind of plan can oh, I have? I don't know. Something to do with Characters in your book, how they or one of them react in a certain situation. I refuse to use the guinea pig unless I'm told about it beforehand. I, I can swear, I'm not making this up. Ruth, please! You must believe what me. What are you talking about, Charles? You keep mentioning Elvira. If she was in here, where would she be standing? She's over there, right there by the chair. You must be able to Yes, dear, I see her distinctly. I'm on the piano with the zebra. Oh, Ruth, please! I'm not going to listen to this any longer. Come on, Ruth, please, listen I'm to me. I'm going up to bed. I shut you sleep. I'm far too upset. I'll leave you down here to turn off the lights, leave you come up and take it out to me if you feel like it. That's bigger for I must say. Oh, shut up. You'll be hanging in the guts of sight. I knew I was in this room. Perhaps it was your subconscious. 
Well, we must find out whether I'm not going to say, and we can make arrangements accordingly. I don't see how I can. Well, try to think. Isn't there someone on the other side of whatever you call it who can advise you? A cat, me. It seems so far away, as though I dreamed it. Well, surely you must know someone aside from Genghis Khan. Oh, Charles! What is it? It's seeing you again, you being so irascible like you always used to be. I don't mean to be irascible, dear. Is it cold being a ghost? No, I don't think so. What happens if I try to touch you? I doubt you can. Do you want to? Oh, Pyro. What is it, darling? I really do feel strange seeing you again. That's better. What's better? Your voice was kinder. Was I ever unkind to you while you were alive? Often. Oh, how can you? I'm sure that's an exaggeration. Not at all. You're an absolute pig that can be much cornwall to that awful hotel. You hate me with a billiard cue. Tell me very, very gently. I loved you very much. I love you too. No, I can't touch you. Isn't that horrible? Perhaps it's a well if I'm going to stay for any length of time. I suppose I should wake up eventually, but I feel strangely peaceful now. That's right. Put your head back. Like that? Can you feel anything? Only a slight breeze in my hair. Well, that's better than nothing. I suppose I should, if I'm really out of my mind, I'll be in the asylum eventually. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Just relax. Oh, oh Ruth. To hell with Ruth. Sky and everything looks freshly washed. Edward's keeping your breakfast hot. You better ring. Shh, we've been doing the times. Oh, don't be silly, Charles. Oh, strange it is about daylight, isn't it? How do you mean? Oh, it reduces everything to normal. Does it? It does. I'm sure I'm very glad to hear it. You're very glacial this morning, dear. Are you surprised? Uh, frankly, yes, I am. I expected more of you. Well, really? Yes, I always viewed you as a woman of perception and understanding. Oh, perhaps it's on my off days. Good morning, Edward. Good morning, sir. Getting fit. Yes, sir, thank you, sir. How's cook? I don't know yet, sir. I haven't asked them yet. Well, you should. You get every morning asking everybody how they are. It's play those wheels. Yes, sir. Greet them for me, would you? <laughs> yes, sir. It will be all for the moment, Edward. It's fine. <laughs> I wish she wouldn't be so facetious with the servants, Charles. It confuses them and undermines their morale. I find that thing to be retrogressive and downright feudal. I don't care what you find. If I have to run the house and you don't. Are oh, you implying I couldn't? You're at liberty to try. I take back what I said about you being a good morning. It's a horrid morning. You better eat your breakfast on the top. It isn't. Now look here, Charles. In your younger days, this display of Roguish flippancy might have been alluring. In middle age novelist, it's nauseating. And rather you ride a frenzy of self abasement at your feet then? No, that would be equally as nauseating, but certainly more appropriate. I don't see what I've done. You behaved abominably last night. You wounded me and insulted me. I was the victim of an aberration. Nonsense, you were drunk. Drunk? Yes, drunk. You had four strong drunk martinis before dinner, a great deal of bogey at dinner, had not so much more to cue when you drank with Dr. Brandon while I was doing my best to entertain that mad woman. That's a story, man. You refused to come up to bed, and when I came downstairs at three in the morning to check in on you, I found you downstairs, half out on the sofa with a fire out and your hair all over your face in an alcoholic coma. I was not drunk, Ruth. Something very peculiar happened to me last night. Something very, oh, very... Oh, I would really rather not discuss it any further. But you must. It's extremely disturbing. Oh, then I agree with you. It showed you up in the most unpleasant light. I found that extremely disturbing. I swear to you that last night, during the sounds, I heard a wild voice. But you couldn't have. And later on, when you went upstairs, I could have sworn that I was talking to her. She was in this room with us. And you seriously expect me to believe that you were not drunk? If I were drunk, I should have a horrible hangover by now, shouldn't I? I'm not quite sure you haven't got one. If I would have had a hangover, my tongue would be coated. See? Oh, how do you put your tongue to 
come back to where it came from. I have a disease with a desire to look at it. I know this. You're frightened. Frightened? Rubbish. What is there to be frightened of? Elvira. You wouldn't have minded it all if I was drunk, but it's all because Elvira's mixed up with it that you're so upset. I seem to remember telling you last night that your views of female psychology were a bit didactic. I should also like to add to your oil. That's where it all began. But what all began? It's dangerous to have someone so strongly in your mind and dabbling with your coach. She certainly wasn't strong in my mind. She wasn't mine. <laughs> oh, she was! Was she? Yes, she was. We were talking about her last night before dinner. You wanted me to admit how more physically attractive she was than you, so you could hold over me. I don't give a hoot how physically attractive Elira was. Oh, yes, you do. Your whole being is a vowel of jealousy. Oh, this is too much! Oh, women, my God, what I think of women! Your views of women are academic to say the least of it. Just because you've always been dominated by them, it doesn't necessarily follow that you should know anything about them at all. I have not been dominated by a woman. Oh, you were had women by your mother until you were 23. And then you went to the pleasures of Mrs. Whatever her name was. Mrs. Winthrop the Well. Oh, I don't care what her name was. And then it was Elvira. She ruled you with a rod of iron. Elvira never ruled anyone. She was much too elusive. That was one of her greatest charms. And then there was Marsha Terrace. My affair of Marsha Terrace lasted exactly seven and a half weeks. And she cried the whole time. The tyranny of tears. And then there was. If you wish to make an inventory of my sex life, dear, I think it's only fair to tell you you missed up on quite a few episodes. I'll consult my diary after lunch and talk to you about this later. The only one that's ever trying to dominate me is you. Oh, that's completely untrue! Oh, no, it isn't. You boss me and bully me and all of me about. I can't even have hallucination if I so please. <laughs> Charles, alcohol will ruin your life if you allow it to get a hold on you. So for all, Ruth, nothing last night had anything to do with alcohol. You seem to rationalize the whole affair to your own satisfaction, but your deductions are based on complete policy. I admit to you that I might have been under some sort of delusion or hypnosis or something like that. But I was stone cold over some salt of fish and extremely unhappy as with our You were unhappy? What about me? You behaved in a too lack of comprehension that honestly shocked me. You seem to forget that you gratuitously insulted me. I did not. You called me a night tonight. You told me to shut up. And when I quietly suggested that we go up to bed, you said with the most disgusting leer that it was a thoroughly moral suggestion. I was talking to Elvira. Well, if you were only talking to Elvira, it certainly up a frightened image of what your first marriage was really like. My first marriage was completely fine. It isn't the worst possible case for you to snare it. I'm not nearly as interested in your first marriage as you think I am, Charles. It's your second marriage that's absorbing me at the moment. It seems to be on the rocks. <laughs> Only because you persist in taking up this ridiculous attitude. Well, my attitude is of any normal woman whose husband gets drunk and curls a few statues. I was not drunk! Quiet, Charles, they're hitting in the kitchen. I don't care if you're in the fuck's own town hall, I was not drunk! Then show yourself, Charles! Don't you dare forget damn me that summon us! Maybe Give me cross the phone! Don't make you better be a bumble grind me! Can I clear it, please, ma'am? Yes, Edward. Cook wants to know about Cook wants to know about lunch, Mom. Will you be into lunch, Charles? I'm to be perfectly happy in my bed if I was Oh, don't be silly, dear. Tell Cook you'll both be into lunch. I heard her. <laughs> I'm going to hike this morning. Is there anything you'd like? Yes, a great deal, but I can't forget the height. Oh, tell Cook to put Alpha Seltzer down on my list, will you, Edward? I'm standing right here. <laughs> I swear to you that last night during this seance I heard Elvira's voice. You put up with it for five years. And then later on I saw her in his room. But I had a shock of my life. That's why I dropped the glass. But you couldn't have. I know I couldn't have, but I did. Well, I'm willing really to imagine that you conceived you did. Yes, that's why I've been trying to employ these hours. Well, then there's obviously something wrong with you. Yes, there is something wrong with me. Something fundamentally wrong with me. 
And I've been imploring your sympathy for hours, but all I got was a sterile temperance lecture. You have been drinking a great deal, Charles. There's no denying that. No more than usual. Did you feel quite well yesterday? Uh, yes, I did, during the day, at least. Uh, what did you eat for lunch? Uh, you should tell you had it with me. Let me see, there was the lemon sauce. Oh, and that cheese thing! How could eating a cheese thing cause me to see my deceased wife after dinner? <laughs> well, you never know, it was rather rich. <laughs> How could you see a deceased husband then? You had just as much of it as I did. Oh, this is getting us nowhere at all. We're going to get nowhere at all if we continue to ascribe supernatural phenomenon to chronic irritation. Supernatural grandmother. I admit you'd be much less irritable. Maybe you ought to see a nerve specialist. I am not in the least neurotic. Never have been. A psychoanalyst then. I refuse to undergo months of expensive humiliation, only to be told at the end of it that I was in love with my rocking horse at age four. Then. I don't suggest. I'm extremely uneasy. Maybe you've got something pressing against your brain. Shouldn't I have a horrible headache or something like that if that's the case? And often to find a lot the size of a cricket ball pressing against his brain and he never felt a thing. Now I know I should know if I had anything like that. Well, he did. What happened to him? He had the lock removed and he's been bright as a button ever since. Uh, did he have any kind of hallucinations or see anything that wasn't quite there? No, I don't think so. What the hell are you talking about here for, then? It's a sure waste of valuable time. Oh, I nearly brought him up as an example. Oh, God, I think I'm going mad. How do you feel right now? Uh, physically, you mean? Altogether. Well, apart from being worried, uh, quite normal. You're not hearing or seeing anything, the least bit unusual. Not a thing.
sit down very closely. Have a cigarette, I'll soothe your nerves. I don't want a cigarette. Then you shan't have one, darling. I want to explain to you without emotion, not beyond any shadow of a doubt, <coughs> the ghost of Shea, uh, what do you call it, my first wife, Elvira, is in this room right now. Yes, dear. I know you're trying valiantly to humor me, but I intend to prove it to you. All right, very well. Uh, you will, right, Elvira, just please me? There are heads on what it is. Uh, you see that load of flowers by the piano over there? Yes, I did it myself this morning. Very untidily, if I may say so. May not. Very well, I never will again, I promise. Elvira, now carry that to the nothing piece and back again. But you will, Elvira? I don't see why I should. You've been quite encouragingly selfish ever since I materialized. Please. <sighs> all right, not that I approve of all these masculine and bought carryings on. All right, now Ruth, watch very carefully. Very well, dear. Go on, Elvira. Do your thing. <laughs> Last! 
mind. I'm behaving abominably selfish. How can I help you? How? Why well, can't you stop me with that wherever she came from? I'm afraid that that is easier said than done. Are you trying to tell me that she is liable to save her indefinitely? It depends largely on her. Oh, but my dear Madame Arcati. Where is she now? My husband has driven her into Folkestone for the evening. Apparently she was eager to see an old friend of her staying at the ground. <laughs> well, give this formality. I shall have to make a note of it to the second quarter research people. We'd be very much obliged if there were no names mentioned. It would be confidential. Oh, thank you, Madame Arcati. This is a very small village and gossip would be most undesirable. I quite understand. Now then. You say she's visible only to your husband? Yes. Visible only to husband? Audible to her, do you? Extremely audible. Extremely audible. <laughs> your husband must have voted? I believe so. Husband did vote. It was apparently a reasonably happy marriage. Oh, tut, tut. I beg your pardon. When did you pass it? Seven years ago. She must have been on the waiting list. Waiting list? Yes. Otherwise, she would have gone past the manifestation phase right now. She must have been so down for return to it. And that wouldn't have been possible unless there was a psychic influence at work. Are you trying to say that my husband, Charles, really wanted her back all that much? Possibly. Or might have been on her own determination. Oh, that sounds much more likely. Would you say she was a woman of strong character? Oh, no, I'm not very interested in talking about that at all. No, I'm not particularly interested in why or how she got here. I'm solely concerned with getting her back exactly where she came from as soon as possible. I fully sympathize with you, Mrs. Conjoint, and I assure you I will do everything in my power to help you. But at the moment, I cannot offer any great hopes. I'm trying to tell me that you are unable to do anything at all. Honesty is the best policy. But that's outrageous! I just took you over to the police! You go too far, Mrs. Conkline. Oh, I go too far indeed. You have any idea what your insane amateur meddling has done? I've been a professional since I was a child, Mrs. Conkline. Amateur is a word I cannot tolerate. Well, it seems to be the height of amateurishness to conjure up malignant spirits and not be able to put them back wherever they came from. I was in a trance. Anything might happen when I'm in a trance. Well, all I must say is you better get right back into one and get this damn woman out of my house. I can't go into a trance from moment to notice. It takes hours of preparation. Not to mention, days beforehand, I have to be extremely careful of my diet. Today, for instance, I happen to like a friend playing pigeon pie. That, plus these cucumber sandwiches, would make a trance out of the question. Well, you'll have to do something. I will report the matter to the Circular Research Committee as soon as possible. Will they be able to do anything at all? I doubt it. They'll probably send over an investigation committee and do a lot of questioning and wall tapping and mumbo jumbo. And then they'll have a conference and you'll have to go to London to testify. Oh, it's too humiliating. It really is. Please try not to upset yourself, Mrs. Conkline. Nothing can be achieved by upsetting yourself. Oh, it's all right and okay for you to talk like that, Madame Arcadi. You have the faintest realization of the position I'm in. Try to look on the bright side. Bright side, indeed. How would you feel if your husband's first wife arose from the grave and came to live with you? Would you be able to see the bright side? I resent your tone, Mrs. Conjoin. I really do. You have absolutely no right to. The whole situation is your fault and you know it. Kindly remember that I came here the other night on your own invitation. On my husband's invitation? I did what I was asked to do, which was to give a seance and establish contact with the other side. I had no idea there was an ulterior motive mixed up with it. Ulterior motive? Yes. Your husband was obviously eager to get in contact with his former ex-wife. If I knew it ahead of time, I would let you know. After all, no less than me. Oh, nonsense. My husband didn't want to get in touch with anybody. He merely invited you over so he could get notes for a mystery novel he's writing about a homicidal medium. Am I to understand that I was only invited in a spirit of mockery? No, he just wanted to get some tricks in the trade. Tricks in the trade? Insufferable! I've never been so insulted in my life. <sighs> Goodbye, Mrs. Conrad. Please don't go, please. Your attitude from the outset has been most unpleasant. Some of your remarks have been discourteous in the extreme. And I would like to say without umbrage that if you and your husband were foolish enough to tamper with the unseen with your own paltry notice in the spirit of ribaldry, then whatever happened to you is your own fault. And to coin a phrase, as far as I'm concerned, you can steal your own!
come now, I can't be insensitive. I have to show a little sympathy to her somehow. Has it been a shock for you? It's been a shock for all of us. A nice shock? What do you want, Elvira? Want? I don't know what you mean. Whenever you were overpowering me to me, I was usually meant that you wanted something. It's hard to be so suspicious of me. All I want is to be with you. Well, you are. I mean alone, darling. If you go up and pamper her and smarm her over, she'll probably come flouncing down again and ruin our perfectly lovely evening. You're incorrigibly selfish, Elvira. Well, I haven't seen you for seven years. It's only natural that she wants to spend some alone time with you to go over old times. But if you really think it's your duty to go up and see her... It is my duty. Then I don't mind. You're horrible, Elvira. You know that. You'll come down again very soon, won't you? I intend to dress for dinner. You can read the Tesla in the meantime. Darling, you don't have to dress for me. I always dress for dinner. Oh, what are you going to have? I should like to watch you eat something very delicious. Be a good girl now. You can bear the gramophone if you like. Thank you, Charles. Shouted, what are you doing in the bathroom? And, 
And then when he was in danger, when he was writing a, a prescription, he suddenly shouted, For God's sake, behave yourself! Well, I'm extraordinary! Oh, oh. Sometimes he goes on like that, particularly like when he's immersed in writing the book. I want to melt him at least for two beds at least, but I do think a change in the rest of you is a good idea. Thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, would you like a cocktail and some sherry before you go? No, thank you. You really, really must be off. How is poor Edward? He'll be all right in a few days. He's still recovering from that precaution, you know. It's funny, isn't it? The both your butler and just your husband should fall on the same day. Yes, if that sort of thing amuses you. <laughs> I am well, you got me far too much as usual. Your heart took I know that. <laughs> I'll pop in and have a good patient, sometime tomorrow morning. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye, Miss Hoffman. Goodbye. Sure, Charles, I need you. All right. It's only a slight strain, you know. This damn slave really essential. It's a waste of precaution. Of course, you won't be able to use your left arm for the next few days. And the drive the folks home this evening. It would be much better if you didn't. Oh, Charles, you could probably easily wait till another night. It's extremely inconvenient. I can't stand another one of these dreary nights at home, Charles. You're driving me dotty. I haven't seen a movie in seven years. Let me be the first to congratulate you. What's that all about? Oh, Charles, try to be sensible, dear. I implore you. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Well, if you do this this long, Joey, remember to drive slowly and carefully. Well, gear change on the right, isn't it? It is. Well, would you just avoid using your left hand as little as possible? All right. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Conlon, could you drive me? I'm afraid not. There's much to do around the house, and there's Edward to be attended to. Well, I'll let you two to wait an hour on yourselves, but if you do this a song go, it carefully does it. The rules are very slippery, anyhow. All right, come along again. Goodbye, Mrs. Conlon. Goodbye, Mrs. Conlon. You really are very infuriating, Elvira. Surely you can wait for to folks home another evening. Oh, um, stop behaving like a schoolgirl. You ought to know better. What? I was talking to Elvira. She isn't here. Well, she was a minute ago. She threw a flower at me. I recognize you, girls. It usually meant that she was after something. You're quite sure she isn't here? Positive. I have to talk to you about something. Oh, God. I must. It's important. You behaved yourself so well for several days. Ruth, you aren't going to get worked up again, are you? I resent that air of patience, Charles. I behaved well, as you call it. But I would like to remind you that my patience has been stretched to its uttermost. The situation is just as difficult for Elvira as it is for you. You must see that she come back I still trust him here for all these years, and what has she met with? Rolling hostility. What does she expect? Surely even an ectoplasmic manifestation in it for the little of the milk of human kind. Oh, milk of human fiddlesticks! Now that just doesn't make sense, Ruth, dear. A virus that is trusting is a positive. The granite, Ruth. Sheer unyielding granite. And a great deal more dangerous into the bargain. <laughs> dangerous, I haven't heard anything so ridiculous. Oh, very wistful little spirit, like a virus, be dangerous. Quite easily, and she is. She's beginning to show her hand. How so? This is a battle, Charles. A bloody duel between Avara and I to the death. Melodramatic hysteria. Oh, this is melodramatic hysteria. It's true. All this talk of battles and duels. Oh, why do you suppose that Edward fell off the top stair and he cracked his skull? What are you talking about? It's because the top stair had been covered with axle grease. Cook discovered it afterwards. Well, you're not making this up, Ruth. No, I'm not. I swear I'm not. Why do you suppose when you were locking that dead branch off the pear tree that the ladder broke? It's because it had been practically so through on both sides. What are you trying to imply? She's trying to kill you. Kill me? <laughs> You're mad. No, I'm not. If you were dead, she'd have you forever on her dark, high astral plane, lying in that high and dry. She's probably planning some sort of spiritual remarriage. I've been pretending to past her. Uh, I granted her as a character, she was a little irresponsible, but she could never be so capable of such cunning. Couldn't she just? Oh, Ruth. Stop looking like a wounded spaniel and concentrate. This is serious. What are we to do? Behave perfectly ordinarily as though nothing has happened. I'm going to find my colleague. I don't care how cross she is at us. She's got to help us. Even if the trance is necessary, she shall go into one way. I have to beat her into it. I'll be back in half an hour. Tell her why we're going to see the vicar. This is appalling. Shh. Now remember, don't put yourself away by the flip of an eyelid. Uh, look out. What? Ah, uh, here's Ed's and look out. Uh, the weather, Elvira, uh, the, the weather is perfectly nice. 
The graph is going down and down and down. It's a simple curve. I find it difficult to believe that you and Ruth, in this particular moment, can't find anything more interesting to talk about than the weather. Oh, this is too much! Oh, come on now, Ruth. Oh, Barbara, Ruth and Charles and I were not talking about the weather as you should truly expect, and I should love you to think that we have any secrets from you. So I will tell you exactly what Charles and I were talking about. I was trying to employ you not to drive me to Folkestone this evening. It will be bad for us all, and we can perfectly easily wait to go another night. But since he is determined to place all of your wishes before mine in absolutely everything, I have nothing further to say. I sure hope you two both enjoy yourselves. Oh, Ruth. She's certainly a woman of sterling character. It's a pity she's so unbidden. Well, as I told you, I'm extremely uncomfortable talking about the roof of Leo Lara. I will mention her again. Are you ready? Ready for what? To the first gun, of course. I want to have my sherry first. You really are terrible, Charles. I don't know what you're talking about, Sir Lyra. How familiar this is! Familiar in what way? Look, all for a merit, like all I had to do was suggest something for you to start hedging me off. I don't mean to hedge you off, dear. I merely just. All right, all right. We'll spend another cozy intimate evening at home with Ruth, so anyway, that awful table center, and snapping us like a terrier. A table happens to be a present for her mother. It's no use trying to defend Ruth. Defend Ruth's taste in me. It's really arts and proxy, and you know it. If you shan't behave yourself, I won't take you to the folks of ever. Oh, Charles, don't be utterly and proud of me. Please, let's go now. Well, then I share with us. Oh, very well. So, if I can't be back here for about half an hour anyway. What do you mean? Who's saying it? She wants to be the vicar. What? Uh, what do you mean, what? You, you say Ruth's taking the car? Yes, she's throwing it back. We'll be back soon, though. Stop her! We'll stop her immediately! What are you talking about, Elvira? Stop her! Don't stop her! Why are you such a mistake for? I'm not a mistake. I don't know what you mean. Oh, you're lying to me. I'm not lying. What's this lie about? What are you such a mistake for? You... You must have done something horrible. Do I have done anything? You're lying to me, Elvira. Oh, God. The car! No, Charles, no! Bruce is right. You're trying to kill me! Oh, 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 oh. oh my God, oh, my God, oh, my God! Oh, no. Hello? Yes, speaking. By the river. No, I'll come immediately. Well, that washes that out. Oh, 
Just the theory I had in the 19th century, there was a widespread belief that a spirit who was responsible for a human's death would disintegrate automatically. How did you know that Elvira was in any way responsible for Ruth's death? Elvira. Such a pretty name. That's such a look to it, has it? Elvira. Elvira. You haven't answered my question. How did you know? It came to me last night in a blinding flash. I had just finished my opal tea and turned out the lights when suddenly I started out of bed with a loud cry. Great Scott! I said, I've got it! That's when I started to put two and two together. I very much be able to. At three in the morning, with my brain barely seated, I went to work on my crystal toilet, but it wasn't very satisfactory, cow, you know. Like I said, I'd very much be obliged if you were to keep any theory regarding my wife's death to yourself, Madame McCarty. My one desire is to help you, Mr. Condine. I feel I've been dreadfully remiss in the whole situation. Not only remiss, but untidy. I'm afraid there's nothing to be done. Ah, oh, but there is! There is! I have a spell! I copied it out of Witchman Crafts in its byways. What the hell are you talking about? Luck of your heart, Mr. Condamine, all is not lost. Now look here, Madame Arcati. You are still anxious to dematerialize your first wife? Of course I am. I'm perfectly furious with her. But... But what? Well, aside from my being angry with her, which she hated even when she was alive, uh, Ruth, my second wife, has been following her around all day and all night. You must understand that she's having a hard time with one thing and another. Your delicacy of feeling does your credit, Mr. Conline. But if you will excuse my bluntness, you are a damned fool, Mr. Conline. Oh, you're just limited to think whatever you please. Now, 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 don't get on your high horse. There's no use in that, is there? I have a very simple spell right here that will get rid of her without hurting her feelings the least. All it requires is complete concentration from you and a minor chance from me. I might even be able to manage it without her. Honestly, I would rather... Charles! What in the world is it? Oh, what's she doing here? She came to offer me her condolences. They should have made congratulations. Don't say that, Elvira. It is in the worst possible taste. She's the one who got me here in the first place, isn't she? Yes. Well, please tell her to get rid of me. I can't stand this house another minute. Uh, Madame Arcati. Well, aren't you going to introduce me? Fine, if you would. Madame Arcati, this is Elvira. Over by the window. How vile is Madame Akati? How do you do? <laughs> Please tell her to get me out of this. Uh, Madame Akati, uh, my first wife wishes to speak to me alone. Would you please leave the room? Oh, must I? I think I'd rather stay. I can smell ectoplasm strongly. What a disgusting thing to say. <laughs> Where is she now? Over here by me. Are you happy, my dear? Tell that silly old bitch to mind her own business! <laughs> Was the journey difficult? Are you weary? She's dotty. Just a moment. Uh, Madame Arcadie. This is wonderful, wonderful. Oh. I lost my contact. This is my goodness. I can feel the vibrations. Go on, Elvira. Don't be a spoil spot. Give her a bit of encouragement. I don't promise to get her into the other room. All right. Yes! Yes! Again! really wants to speak to me alone. Oh, must I? It's so lovely actually being in the room with her. And only for a few moments. I promise she'll be here when you get back. Very well. You insist. How good is she really? I don't know. Do you really think she would get me back? But my dear child. And don't call me your dear child. Smug and supercilious. There's no need to be rude to me, Elvira. I want to get out. I know you want to get out. I'm just as anxious for you to leave as you are. Honestly, I'm surprised at you. Oh, Charles! Stop your crying already. 
They're only ghosts here, so they don't mean anything, but they're very painful. You brought this all on yourself, anyhow. That's right. Rub it in. It's only because I loved you. The silliest thing I ever did was to love you. You were always unworthy of me. That statement comes perilously near impertinent, Elvira. I waited for you, for you, day after day after day. All through your affair with that rusty looking woman from the south of France, I waited for you because I loved you and thought truly of you. And then you married Ruth. And even then I loved you because I thought you loved me best. She absolutely ruined you. I couldn't, I didn't have to be in the house a day before I realized that. Your books aren't a quarter as good as they used to be. That is entirely untrue. Ruth encouraged me and helped me out with my work, which is the damn sight more than you ever did. That's probably what's wrong with them. All you ever thought about was going out to parties and having fun. Well, why shouldn't I have fun? I died young, didn't I? You needn't die at all if you hadn't gone onto the river and get soaked to the toe with Guy Henderson. So we're back at Guy Henderson again, are we? You behaved abominably over Guy Henderson, and it is no use pretending you did not. Guy adored me, and anyhow, he was very handsome. You told me you didn't find him handsome in the least. You would have got up the roof if I told you that. Of course I would have. Any sane man would. Ugh, you were always making a fuss over nothing at all. Nothing at all? I can't believe you, Elvira. Did you have a fan with Guy Anderson? I would rather not discuss that if you don't mind. Answer me. Did you, or did you not, have an affair with Guy Henderson? Of course I didn't! You let him kiss you, didn't you? How could I stop him? He was bigger than me. And you swore to me! Of course I swore! I'm fine, I can't believe you. Honestly. You seem to forget why I went. You seem to forget that you had spent the entire evening making sheep's eyes at that overblown Harrigan with the false pearls. A woman in Cynthia Cheviot's position would hardly wear false pearls. They were practically all she was wearing. I'm just pleased to see that your sojourn in the other world is not, at the least, compared to your native vulgarity. That was a remark of Pomp's ass! Oh, shut up! I'm sick of all these insults. Please go away. It's nothing I should like better. And when I think of what, what could have happened if I had succeeded in getting you to the other side, oh, I can't believe it. I mean, I'll be better off with Ruth. At least you'll find her own set and not get in my way. Oh, so I get in your way, is it? Only because I thought you loved me. And I sort of felt sorry for you. Oh God, I'm sick of all these insults. Please just go away already. There's nothing I should like better. I always believed in cutting my losses. That's why I die. What oh, the brains of history. Oh, call that old girl again. I'm sick of being messed about like this. No, I'm not done talking to you yet. I knew you were feckless and irresponsible. I knew that before you left Bobby Sausageton. Nobody but a monument of war would have thought of having a honeymoon at Bobby Sausageton. What's wrong with Bobby Sausageton? All I got were potted palms, seven hours a day on dead golf course, and three these orders from like Mary England. It's a pity you didn't tell me so at the time. I did, but you wouldn't listen. That's why I went out on the moors with Captain Grace Girdle. I was desperate. You told me you went to see your aunt in Exmouth. It was the moors. Captain Grace Girdle. With Captain Grace Girdle. I was a fool I was, what a damn fool. Did he make love to you? Of course. Oh, Elvira. Only very discreetly. He was in the Calvary, you know. Well, all I can say is that I'm well, well rid of you. Unfortunately, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. You're dead and Ruth's dead. I shall lock, sock, barrel, and sell the house. I shall follow you. Oh, no, you won't. I'll move somewhere very, very far away. Perhaps South America. You always hated traveling. You are terrible at it. I shall have to follow you. You called me back. I did not call you back. Well, somebody did it. It's hardly I've been like the I've been Ruth. But nothing was further from my thoughts at the time. You were talking about me before dinner that evening. I could have just as easily been talking about Joan of the Ark, but that did not necessarily mean I wanted her to live with me. As a matter of fact, she's rather fun. Stick to the point. <laughs> just call that old girl in again. I'm sick of all this. Fine, whatever. Uh, Madame McCarthy, would you please come in now? Darling, still here? Unfortunately, yes. Where? Tell me where. Blowing her nose by the piano. Oh, my dear, my dear. Stop her flying over me, Charles. I shall break something. Madame McCarthy, me and my wife have agreed to... She wants to go home as me immediately as possible. Oh. Uh, wherever she came from. Oh, you don't think she would like to stay a few days more while I get things more organized? No, no, I want to go now. I can stay with her and bring my crystal. God forbid. Uh, we have both agreed she is to go home as soon as possible, Madame McCarthy. Please strain every nerve. Very well, if you insist. I most emphatically do insist. Oh, Charles! Shut up! I can't guarantee anything, you know. It may not work. Well, we have to try something at least. 
What do you suggest? Nothing more than a little verse, really. It held to just use that in the 17th century. What would that be? Well, what, kind of, what kind of formula, what kind of verse? Well, we'll need some salt and pepper, and we will need to use the gramophone. Of course, in the old days, they would use a zither or a reed pipe, but I think we better have the same record again. I believe there's salt. Okay. I believe there's pepper and salt in the kitchen. I'll go grab some. Sprinkle it there with a piece of soup, son. with the lights or anything like that? Yes. It's 
entirely my fault. Be that as it may, the least you could do is admit failure gracefully and make the best of it. Your manners are gorgeous to a degree. I'm exhausted as well, don't you see? I've had to do all the damn tables having since David left us. One not for yes, two for no. Well, she can't get us back, she can't, is that sucked? We shall have to think of something else. No, nothing at all is acceptable besides that. There's gratitude for you. Gratitude? Yes, for all the years Ruth and I have devoted to you. What about all the years I've devoted to you? Not at all, we waited on you hand and foot, haven't we, Ruth? You were always exceedingly selfish and always were. I don't see why you're so anxious to get back to me if that's the case. You called us back. I would explain it until I'm black in the face that I did nothing of the sort. Madame Marconi said you did. And now Marconi's a mumbling old fool. I could have told you that in the first place! Oh, stop just arguing and wake her up! Wake up, Madame Marconi. Wake Shake up! her! It might upset her. I would never have killed her! Wake up, Madame Marconi, wake up! What time is it? Ten past five. Over an hour ago. I must make a note of that in my diary. Are they still here? Yes. How disappointing. How do you suggest? We mustn't give up hope. Shut up! That's my motto. Oh, this schoolgirl phraseology is driving me mad. Now then. Now then what? What do you say we have another seance and make it a real rouser? Not another seance! I might be able to materialize the trumpet if I try hard enough. Better than nothing, you know. I feel as fit as a fiddle left. I don't care if she materializes the whole symphony orchestra. I implore you not to let her have another seance. Uh, Madame Marcotti, don't you think after all this time we've had enough seances? They haven't achieved much, have they? Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. I know that, but... Well, then cheer up. Away with the melancholy. I really think we ought to discuss the situation a little more before you go off into another trance. Good! An excellent idea. And while we're at, I'll have another these sandwiches. I'm as hungry as a hunter. Would you like some beer to go with it? No, better not. I think I'll have myself a whiskey and a soda. Very good. Make it a double and enjoy it. One day, I intend to give myself the pleasure of telling Madame Alcotti exactly what I think of her. She's trying her best, Ruth. <laughs> are the girls getting despondent? I'm afraid they are. We're not careful, she'll materialize a hockey team. Now then, the discussion. Fire away. My wife and I have been discussing it, and they are both absolutely convinced that I called it over somehow. Very natural. I am thoroughly convinced that I did not. Love is a strong psychic force. It can work untold miracles. A true love can encompass the universe. I am sure it can, but my love for Elvira and Ruth is of the warmest, but I cannot truthfully describe it as what you just told me. So what do you suggest we do to deteriorate him? You may not know your own strength. I implore you, Madame Akati. I did not call them back, consciously or unconsciously. But Mr. Condamine... It is my final word on the subject. Neither of them could have appeared unless there would have been somebody, a psychic subject in the house, who wished for them. Certainly was not me. Are you sure? Dr. Bradman. I never knew he cared. Are you sure? Are you really sure? Absolutely positive. Great Scott! Oh! I've been barking up the wrong tree! How do you mean? The sun in the case. What? I don't know what you're talking about. There's no reason why you would. It was before your day. I wonder. Oh, I wonder. It was a subway case. I wish you'd explain. Wait. I'll run good time. Who was in the house during the first seance? Well, there was Ruth, the Bradmans, the Chastains, myself, and I. Ah, yes, but the Bradmans and the Chastains weren't here the other night, were they? No, they were not. <sighs> Quickly, my crystal. Thank you, Jack. Dang thing, it's cloudy. This is a pit. Ah, here we are. A white bandage! Hold on to a white bandage! I haven't got a white bandage. Hush, wait. No, no, it's near, it's very near. If it's another ghost, I shall scream! Oh, I hope it's somebody we know, I shall feel so silly. 
Did you ring, sir? The bag is the way passage! No, Edwards, I did not. I'm oh, sorry, sir. I thought I heard the bell of someone calling. I don't really know what it was. Come here, Charles! Oh, go on, Edward, go on with it now, my darling. It's quite all right. Who is in this house right now, Charles? Oh. Who do you see? Oh, madam. Go on. With you. And? The master. Anyone else? No, madam. He's lying. Oh, madam. They always do. They? Where are they now? They're right there. Oh, stick you still, Omar. I concentrate. I can't! He just pointed out where they were. Do you even can see them? Yes. I did not very clearly, but enough. Oh, my God. Give a sandwich. Fine. <laughs> I don't want a sandwich. I'm going to have Nonsense. a sandwich. <laughs> Spirits can travel over water. 
to one of your more acid moments, Ruth. You told me I've been haggard all my life. How right you were! But now I'm free of you, Elvira, Mother, Mrs. Winthrop, Llewellyn, and all the rest. And I must say I'm enjoying myself immensely. I'm going to leave the house now, so put out good thoughts and think kindly of me. You can break up the house wherever you like. I'm leaving again now. Good work, Ruth. Keep up the good work. Get Elvira to help you. Parting is such a sweet, sweet sorrow. 